Spencer just pointed this out to me and said, this looks like Mosquito's ride. And you know what? <laughs> totally it does. Do I pay $35 just because I want the snake? <laughs> All right, we just left the toy show. I don't know, should I have gotten that? Can we go back to the toy show? Today, I am at QuadCon in Springfield, Illinois. Yeah, it's a toy convention in my hometown. So it's real easy just to pack up the fam and go check out the toy show for a few hours. Pretty excited. I've done QuadCon a few times in the past. In fact, I've actually set up at QuadCon, but this time I'm just going in to do a little toy hunting and have some fun with the kids. Right, we got some Hasbros over here. Razor Ramon with his necklace, 150. So like, I definitely picked this guy up in Colorado like a year ago, if you guys were watching. And I think I paid like, I don't even remember, $20 maybe, maybe less. Although mine did not have the necklace. So that's gotta be what's doing it. Andre up here for 45, I do need this one. Bulldog, Tito. Nightheart. Oh, there's Animal. 35. I need uh, I need Animal. Is Jake with his snake for 35? Ooh. I mean, I've got Jake, but I don't have the snake. Do I pay $35 just because I want the snake? <laughs> I guess we'll see. More over here. Papa Shango, 35. There's Akeem. Macho, there's another Andre. The Mountie, I found Dufty Baby. This is one I need. With a nice price. Nice price, yep. He's always, he's always on the higher end. I do need a Dusty. There's another Jake with a snake, that's amazing. A couple Ted DiBiase's. Demolition, 35 for the pair? Oh, it's Typhoon and Earthquake. Regular Undertaker. I love this old Jax uh, rock. These were the ones done in the classic LJ and Superstar style. 35, like they're still doing it, you know, today. AEW, because there's the Cody that we have in that style. There's the rock, it's pretty sweet. I kinda like that. Let's see what we have for uh, Joe's over here. Well, there's some there's some other stuff over here. Nico Buck Rogers. Wow. Staroid Raiders. That guy's awesome. 125. I'm not super familiar with that that line, but I do love some of this older stuff. All right, so here we go. Joe's. We got a what? Clean Sweep. Original Destro. See if anything in here stands out to me specific. <laughs> so you guys know what I'm looking for. Here's a Ninja Force. Here's Dojo. I already have him loose. I need Orange Slice cur currently. And I'm not talking about a can of soda. Oh, and then we got a vintage Star Wars here too. Look at these guys with their card backs. It's beautiful. Chief Chirpa. Dang. This is amazing. So many. I love the way that these are all packaged with their card backs here. Oh, that R5's in pretty rough shape. Whew. Man, that is awesome. 3PO. It's my boy R2. Low gray. I'm not actively collecting Kenner Star Wars, but this is still very, very cool to see. Look at that walrus man. Hey, this is only 30. That's awesome. Oh wait, here's the boy right here. Gonk. 155 for the power droid. 
man. So these vintage Star Wars figures being sold with the card backs are pretty cool. Like, I really like the presentation here. I think matching the figures up with those vintage card backs, the card backs themselves being something you don't see too often, right? I mean, unless you're buying those mint on card. Um, I think it's a really cool way to sell these figures. However, I've talked about in the past how Vintage Kenner Star Wars almost feels intimidating to me as something to collect. And I know that it's not something that I want to go all in on. There's just pieces here and there that I like and that I've added to my collection over the years. And honestly, like, seeing the prices on these is one of those intimidation factors that I was talking about. It just almost feels like it's way too late to get started on collecting Vintage Kenner Star Wars. So here's a bunch of great mass stuff. I don't know if it, I think, yeah, I think he said it was all open, but it's all complete inside, which is pretty awesome to see. So Vampire, Piranha, the Gator, look at the Rhino up here, the Outlaw, look at the artwork on those boxes, man. God, these are amazing. Love it, shows you oil tanker, changes to mobile command headquarters. Look at the volcano. Firefly Condor and Jackhammer. Beautiful. There's a couple Micronauts down here too. Wow. God, that's amazing. I always loved the photography on these boxes. It made them look so special. Yeah. And you've just got the GI Joe The Shogun Warriors, these big giant robots. Look at that Mazinger Z. Those are so cool, aren't they? What do you have on the food fighters? Are you selling them singles or is a lot? I'm individuals. We've got 25 each. On 25 each? Five dollars on a burger because he didn't have no market. Oh yeah. This, <laughs> this guy's just a burger by himself. Yeah. He's in development. <laughs> Fleet though with his backpack and his gun. It's pretty nice. This guy's got two left arms. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, that's so funny because the parts pop off of them oh, so easy. So, easy. so yeah. yeah. Ah, these food fighters. Now, that's actually a pretty decent price point on these. And I'm saying that as somebody who loves this toy line and has paid attention to this toy line because it has really blown up on the aftermarket in the past five years. It's kind of crazy how that went from being an unknown line that was very easy to collect to suddenly being some of the more expensive toys that I see on my travels. I would say that especially Private Pizza and Short Stack here are good ones to pick up at that $25 price point because they had their accessories. You never find them with the backpacks or with the guns. So pretty decent deal on these. I didn't need them so I left them. Hopefully somebody else took advantage of that deal. Batman Forever Sonar Sensor Batman? Yo, 15 bucks. You're not sending me to the cooler. I got to be out of some kind of tempted for five bucks to grab this on VHS. <laughs> Do it now. Ah, uh, hold on. Who needs all those vintage Kenner Star Wars figures with the card backs we saw when we've got 90s Power of the Force for five bucks a pop? Huh? Huh? We can get this walrus man right here for only five dollars. <laughs> I mean, I say that jokingly, and I know it's all like, ha ha ha, 90s Star Wars, but I still get so nostalgic every time I see it. Look at that. Remember when he was never before offered until this figure right here? Love those hollow foil stickers. Some of these Power of the Jedi ones are actually really good. And you know, like I'm looking at guys like this. You know that that HasLab Cantina's coming out and people are gonna be scrambling to find figures like Bo Sheck here. 15 bucks seems pretty good. Whoa. Red carded Prince Zizor. So it's an international release, it looks like, because it's got 
trilingual box. But I don't know if I've ever seen the Shadows of the Empire figure on a red card. Why is this tempting me so much? <laughs> I love Shadows of the Empire. I think I went into that in one of my previous toy hunts, like how much I loved Shadows of the Empire. Honestly, I don't know. That's kind of cool. So as mentioned, I definitely talked about it in another toy hunt recently. I believe it was when I visited Nowhere Toys in Miami, Florida. We were taking a look at all of the Shadows of the Empire toys there, and I kind of just poured out why I love that so much. It was just such an exciting time to be a Star Wars fan, and I still really have a soft spot in my heart for the Shadows of the Empire toys that came out during that time. So seeing this orange-carded international release of Prince Zizor is something that's actually kind of appealing to me. It's very cool and very different and just not something I've really seen while I've been out hunting. Oh, by the way, I totally called it with that Boshek because I walked away for like five minutes and when I came back to this table, that Boshek was gone. So somebody was definitely buying up all the Cantina guys as they saw them and good on them. That was a really good price for that figure. My wife found the He-Mans. You did it. I always find the He-Mans. You always find the He-Mans. What's over here? Standard Belt Leech. There's a Zodak. Ram Man. Cobra Khan. Triclops. Manny Faces. Looks like they're all 30. Except for Leech. He's 20. Spencer, what'd you find? Ben 10. You found Ben 10s? Yeah. <laughs> You're getting good at this, man. Is there anything in here that you need? I don't know. Let's see. The only really guys in here are the ones that communicate with each other. Oh, but you don't have any of those, right? No. Hey, here's Steam Smythe. Do we have Steam Smythe? Yeah, but mine is like Whoa. the action one. Hold on, are these like... They communicate. Are these bootleg Ben 10 figures? What? That's what that red light makes me think. Ah, uh, these, look at the quality on that. These are, this one's a bootleg. These are bootlegs. What? <laughs> I don't think these are, that's interesting. I wonder they don't look the same. Yeah, they look a little different, don't they? Like, that cannibal. So some of these I shiny. think are, oh no, they're all like that. They're all like that. Yeah, the toy doesn't have these. That's weird. And look, you can see how they're like coming apart. And the plastic feels different, yeah, and, look, and they're no not painted. There, there's no yellow back here. And the, yeah, they're not painted great. That is weird. You found bootleg a batch bootleg. of bootlegs. This one's real. Oh yeah, that's real. That one's real. I have this one. What? But here's another, here's a, what's his name? Hex. Hex, and he is also a bootleg. Uh. No, Dude, well. LED lights, red lights in the chest of an action figure is a dead giveaway for a bootleg. Why in the world do they think that's a cool action feature when they make these? <laughs> it's so Look weird. Look at the eye. The eye is off. The eye is off. Maybe this one's... That no, one's real. I think this one's real. Yeah, I think I think it just got a... That one's just like a factory mishap. Yeah. I think this is the only real one in here, though. I think the rest of these are all bootleg. How that's crazy. Big. Yeah, look at this weird Ben. He's look, huge. And you know, his secret power of yeah. his stomach glowing red for some reason. It's Is that the Ben 10 you know? No. <laughs> That's so weird. And that right there is supposed to be white. Yep. Not, yep. not green. Yep. Well, I think that's the first time Spencer has found bootlegs of something that he collects. <laughs> Whoa, I love these. Jumbo Keshis. These are awesome. Look at the car backs on these. I have like any So these are kind of like, you know, muscle men. Uh, we have a bunch of the little ones at home, but these are like bigger ones. It's like. Yeah, totally. Oh. This, guy's toilet, this guy's toilet paper. This guy's tea. It toilet paper. It literally says tea. Yeah, it literally says tea. Yep. Ooh, I like this one. Oh, these are really cool though. I like the computer. I do too, I like that one a lot. I do like the toilet paper guy too. Those are pretty sweet. How about the big Rocky guy? Oh, okay, that one is cool. I love these old Trend Masters Godzilla toys. So they got Mecha Godzilla hatched and they got Rodan hatched. 
Those are sweet. This. Call the Guardian Beast. Big Beast God. You guys recognize this guy, right? Look at that. He was $3.99 somewhere. That's rad. Look, there's all these amazing vinyl monsters. And the things that keep drawing my attention are things like Super Robotic Rangers. <laughs> oh my god, this is a knockoff signed by JDF. Jason David Frank signed this. That's amazing. Spencer brought me to the Street Sharks. Also, Extreme Dinosaurs, too. Street Dinosaurs? You have an Extreme Dinosaur guy at home. Actually, we have the two. Two of them? Yeah, I have the Raptor and the T-Rex. Oh, and then here is, look, here's the Pterodactyl guy, too. I like the T-Rex. He's my favorite. Also, I just triggered the action feature on him. Did you see that? Like, his head butts forward. Oh. The two I have don't have action features. These Street Sharks are pretty sweet. I like this one. Yeah? Well, I think this guy's got an action feature. He squirts water. Yep, looks like it. Okay, his arms move. He's Dr. Piranoid. Does he turn into this? No, he turns into, uh, let's see, how do we... That. Oh. Rawr. 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 That's right, Dr. Piranoid. Oh, makes sense. <laughs> Look at the vehicle back here too. That's awesome. Man, these guys are awesome. Look at the details on these guys. That sculpt is insane. So cool. So I just talked about how it feels like it's too late to start collecting Kenner Star Wars right now. And I'm gonna tell you that I almost feel the same way about Street Sharks. So Street Sharks was a little after my time as far as like my childhood and getting toys. So I've never had Street Sharks figures. Uh, but as a collector, I've always appreciated them. And of course they are very similar to so many things that I love like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So they've always had that draw, but I've never really dove in to buy any of them. And now it's at a point where that toy line is a bit on the pricey side. They've gotten a little more expensive than I'm willing to pay for just starting out with something like that. Honestly, <clears throat> Honestly, this is where like those new 40th anniversary figures come in that Mattel's doing. I might just pick up some of those and like, there's my Street Sharks. Uh, but still, I appreciate this vintage line a lot. It's really cool, especially getting to see them in person because I really do think the figures look amazing. Some killer sculpting going on there. Teal shoots his blood sucking eel, but wait, Slugger swam to the rescue. Here's the serious street, street Sharks up here. Look, there's some hand sharks. Can't touch these guys though. These are the pricier ones. And an extreme dinosaur up there too. Nice. Ooh, there's another guy. Some good 5.5s over here. Muscle Warriors Thor. This is the one I always thought looked like Mega Man. <laughs> Bearded Mega Man. Oh, hey, here's Baltard. Formo Toys is bringing these back. Spencer. What? Freeze! <laughs> You're not sending me to the cooler. <laughs> so this one's an ambulance. Cool. This one's a camper, right? Yeah. Oop, camper. Yeah, I don't want to drop. That is really cool. Yeah, 1974. <laughs> You want this camper toy instead of that big metal one that we saw at the, <laughs> at the that's really cool. I kind of think I like the big metal one. So. Oh, okay. We got to go find that one again. It's, that is really neat. Yeah, 1974. Like wow. Yeah, yeah look at all the look stuff all in there. The... Is there like kids in there buried under everything? It looks like there's a shoe or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the kids are just buried under everything. Under Come on, the, kids, we're going home. <laughs> it's time to go home, kids. Get under the ground. Ah! This is your spot. <laughs> well, I love this. 
Because oh, yeah. this is, you know, obviously I love Teddy Ruxpin. And this is one of the extra outfits that they sold for Teddy Ruxpin. So I never had any of the dress up I didn't even things. know that that was a thing. Yeah, this is really cool to see. You just don't see him wearing alternate outfits very often. And I'm assuming the hat is what people would lose first. Yeah, right? Too, yeah, right? Because it just looks like his ears just yeah. kind of fit through it, and that's probably what keeps it on him. It's a very, very warm feeling outfit. <laughs> There's some Motu classics hiding in here. Fearless Photog. No price on it, I'm not sure. Looks like the rest of these are all vintage. Oh no, here's another classics. Snake Man at Arms. I'm actually not familiar with this. Playmobil Green Dragon. 1995. That's really cool looking. I don't know. It's, I like it. $15. Oh, a whole bin of turts in here. Ooh, that's a really nice scale tail. I love this figure. Mine at home's got some discoloring, so I've kind of been on the lookout to replace him. It's an option, that's an option. And then, there's another one. This one is 90. But that's because this one is complete. Ooh, baby. Mmm, not today. Why is this Godzilla blue? And $200. <laughs> Maybe he's there. <laughs> San Diego exclusive, I guess that's why. He's very, very cool looking, very striking. Spencer just pointed this out to me and said, this looks like Mosquito's ride. And you know what? Totally it does. Techni eyes. Technically Hordak rides it, but you're right. It does look like Mosquito's eyes, doesn't it? Totally looks like that should be Mosquito's steed. It's a very good one. Why don't we have this in Origins yet? Make it happen, Mattel. Overlooked. Overlooked, very cool beast from the vintage line. Oh man. So I've been talking about the vintage Star Wars today, and this is one of the things that I want from the vintage line. A complete Max Rebo band. So there's a box one back there for 300, and a loose one here for 200. It's, and this is 99% complete. Missing flute, see? I would, I almost feel like I'd be better off getting a beat up boxed one like this and maybe opening it. I don't know, is that, is that sacrilege? Would people get mad at me for that? Because I would love to display a really nice, complete Max Rebo band. All right, what have I stumbled on here? Masters of the Galaxy Bootleg Deluxe. Oh, there we go. There's the artist name down here. Awesome. I love this stuff. Wow, look at the web store bootleg. <laughs> That's so cool. Is Merman back there too? Very cool. Oh my gosh, look at this. Fisher Price McDonald's set. What? What? Oh my god, I love this. There's a drive through This is so cool. Oh, and look, and it folds up. Wow. This is amazing. This McDonald's Fisher Price playset is something that I was not anticipating falling in love with so much, but that really jumped out at me. And it's funny because I didn't have a lot of footage right here that I showed you of us stumbling upon it, but that's because like I put the camera down and Spencer and I just started playing with it and I was checking out all the features. I especially loved the little Playland outside and while it's not an actual representation of the real McDonald's Playland equipment that we played on as kids It was still really cool how some of those old McDonald's characters like the cheeseburger and the shake are like Outside as part of the aesthetic of this playset Plus just like that classic McDonald's look that is 
a thing of the past. I don't know, something about this really stood out to me. And the dealers at that table knew it because they came right over and they were like, we'll do $40 on this. Like they're already offering me way lower prices. They did mention they've been carrying it around for a while. So I, I guess this is one of those things that like, it caught my attention, but I don't know. I got so much of this show that I still need to see first. Hamburgers eat people at a McDonald's. Spencer loves all these bootleggos. Look at those turts. Turts? Turts. Look at those turts. Pizza. Hey, is that Mondo Gecko? <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, it's Mondo Gecko. That's Mondo Gecko. That's cool. There's Beep, look at Bebop. In April. Oh, it's actually from that. From Mutant Mayhem, right? Yeah. yeah. This has got the book and the pencil. Rocksteady. Oh, there's Rocksteady. That's crazy. Rocksteady. I kind of love how random this table is here. Poor mutagen man with no body armor. This headhunter is awesome. V2 headhunter. It's got a $50 price tag though, but it is cool. Oh, that's Tweeg from Teddy Ruxpin. I love this whole Teddy Ruxpin figure line. What else we got? Headhunter Stormtrooper. Some mask figures. Burger King Pokemon toys. Oh, and look at the old Pokemon bouncy balls. That's wild. Do you really wanna, do you really wanna taste it? What we got on Peacemaker here? John Cena Peacemaker, 15. Oh dang, it's pretty sweet. Hey, so I found Articulated Empire here, and they came bringing the big guns. Look at this, Mythic Legions, Animal Warriors of the Kingdom. Big fan of this line. These are so, so well done. Ooh, I like this one, Tiberius. The, the gorillas are some of my favorites from this line though. This one's obviously a Beastman inspired one. It was a PowerCon exclusive. It's so good. Oh yeah, look at the look at these guys here too. Ooh, these like glow in the dark weapons. Oh, that's pretty rad. Ooh, so dangerous having all these right in front. Because <laughs> there's so many of these I didn't pick up, but I always, always look at them and drool. I love. I mean, God, here he is again. Look, I just I love this guy. Mm. That looks like Stratos. It does look like Stratos. So that is a Stratos uh, inspired paint deco. I have this one. I have all the Motu themed ones. Wait. So you have them all. All, they've, so they've done a bunch of Motu themed oh, ones. Like, like so any of them that are, hand? yeah, and so I always get those when they come out. The one that looked like a hand? Yeah, and that Skeletor too. Trap draw? I'll have to, yes, they have done a trap draw one. I have them at home, I'll show them to you. <laughs> Where do you see the trap draw? Speaking of trap draw, they got the Mondos here. This is the brand new Orko. I just got him, I haven't even opened him yet at home. I just looked at him and I Trap. Yeah, you love trap jaw, don't you? <laughs> oh, the golden axe skeletons are pretty sweet too. Headless horseman, Krampus. I have these. These are amazing. Why is that Krampus red? This one's the re-release, so they made them red on the new version that came out. Yep, super good, super worth it. A bunch of the cosmic legions over here too. Oh, there's Waltor. Shout out to my boy, Walter. All right, I think it's time to wrap up our visit to QuadCon here in Springfield. We've been here for a couple hours. There's a lot of really cool stuff here. Uh, it's about lunchtime and we're all hungry. So we are gonna hit the road and get on out of here. But QuadCon puts on a really fun convention and they travel around. QuadCon does a lot of stuff here in the Midwest. And again, having a show like in my hometown that I can just like 
roll out of bed, get in the car, drive to for a couple hours and then come back home, that's pretty nice considering I'm usually all over the country doing this. So definitely cool having a local toy show, show like that that I can visit about once a year or so. You know, I'm not quite ready though to get to my haul just yet because as we're leaving and we're in the car and we're driving, regret suddenly set in. All right, we just left the toy show and we're sitting here and Spencer's got his haul and I got my things and I'm talking to my wife and I'm telling her about that McDonald's Fisher Price playset that I saw. And she immediately says, oh, that's cool. Oh, did you get it? And then all of a sudden I started doing that thing where I'm like, should I have gotten that? I don't know, should I have gotten that? I think it was more like, are you am I gonna be hearing about this? Am I gonna, <laughs> are you gonna be complaining yeah. about not picking it up? Yeah, I think that's more what happened. <sighs> Look, it's one of those things where like, you know, they, they, they were pretty motivated to get rid of it. And they were talking to me about it and they were like saying they could go do better on the price. And I left and I can't stop thinking about it. And it's one of those weird things that I didn't know I was looking for that. I mean, I even think that thing's pretty cool. <laughs> See? That, that, might, but that might be a more nostalgic thing for us, But though. <laughs> that's what it is, right? It's a total nostalgia we, thing. We played here. Look, that's what I mean. Like, it can't be properly described how huge McDonald's was in the 80s yep. and maybe early 90s, but it was such a big part of all of our childhoods. And that's, it feels weird because it's just a fast food restaurant, whatever. But, like... As that, a kid, it's not just a fast food restaurant. That's what it's I mean. Big, it was like going to it was like going to Disneyland every time you were getting lunch, right? Like that's what it felt that, like. That might be a little extreme. That was maybe that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but I don't know. I think that's the thing. I think that toy is like this perfect time capsule of a period gone by. Yes. Yeah. And I just keep thinking about how cool that would look with random figures all over it, like they're going to McDonald's. Can we go back to the toy show? We're on our way. <laughs> We're on our way. On our Luckily, way. this one's local and we hadn't yeah. gotten very far away. Just down so, the street. what if it's not there anymore? Then you got your answer. Then I got my answer. Got All right. Answer. All right, you let's. You supposed to get it in the first place. That's. You're a smart lady. <laughs> All right, back in the hotel. Getting ready to head back to the show floor and. See if McDonald's is still there. Okay, where was he at? This is the part where we get to find out the truth. Is it still here? It's still here. Okay, so I have a question. So he offered 40. And I have like thirty-eight dollars in cash, <laughs> and I know that sounds crazy, but like, yeah. Would you take the thirty-eight? I sure will. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. I feel That's so funny. dumb. Like I was counting. I was like, oh, 20, 35, 6, 7. Yeah, I'm literally two dollars short of what he told me. <laughs> but thank you very much. If you, if you did it on yeah. charge, you, if you, oh great. If you did it on charge, it. It'd be that much anyway. So. That's true. That's true. Thank you. Thank you. There's McDonald's coming home with me. Uh, I will take the box. Yeah, it'll make it easier to carry out. Thank you guys very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Now you got one less thing to take home, right? That's exactly right. Look at that. It's like perfect. Beautiful. All right. I know. I love. It. I know that. I almost think that's what sold me on it with the like characters on there. Thanks. I did it. I'm now the proud owner of a Fisher Price McDonald's. <laughs> so now that I went all the way back and bought that thing, let's get on with my haul from QuadCon. So I did indeed go ahead and pick up that Jake the Snake Roberts WWF Hasbro figure with his snake included, uh, just something I wanted for my personal collection. Uh, I picked these up quite a bit just here and there. I really don't think I have plans to go like all in 
and especially get all these guys complete because it's another very pricey line, but where I can get them for good prices, I'm definitely going to. And my nostalgia got the better of me. I picked up that orange or red carded Prince Zizor figure from Shadows of the Empire. By the way, red card, orange card, I've seen them called both things. What do you call it, red card or orange card? They look a little bit more orange, but I think it's supposed to represent a red lightsaber. Ah, anyway, I'm glad I bought that figure. And of course, the coolest thing that I picked up at the show is one of those things that I had no intention of ever just finding and falling in love with, but it's that vintage McDonald's Playland playset. This thing is super fun. Obviously it's sized for little people, sized figures, which are pretty small, but I still had a lot of fun just throwing a bunch of random toys on here just for the photo shoots for this video. And it's kind of really showing like what you can do with something like this. It's just a really fun little display piece for your collection. I love the weird little cheeseburger outside that eats people. Like what the heck, that's, <laughs> that's amazing. Um, I love that it's got an interior with a cash register, it's got a drive through I mean, this is just a fun toy, and as mentioned, it's a neat little time capsule to an era that is long gone. I mean, McDonald's today is but back then, like I said, it was kind of like going to Disneyland every time you got to go. So this is a fun toy, and uh, I'm glad that I got it. Hey guys, thank you so very much for joining me for another installment of Toy Hunting with Pixel Dan. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. This was a fun one. It was nice, again, like I said, getting to just kind of like go out locally and do a little toy hunting at a local show. And it was sort of like a last minute thing too, but it put together a pretty fun episode and I got some pretty cool stuff. I want to give you all very special thanks for joining me every Saturday for the show. If you haven't already, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It really does help the channel out. Hit the like button, leave me a comment, and stay tuned because we'll be dropping new episodes of Toy Hunting every single Saturday. Massive shout out to all of my supporters over on Patreon. You guys are amazing. Thank you all. Have a wonderful weekend and happy hunting, my friends.